right. So, um, Jimmy. Jay. Jimmy. Jay. We're recording this on Monday night. Yes. As we always record on Monday night. And guess what we just found out about? Tell me. Your boy Dak Prescott got a contract. So, initially, what we were going to talk about is I read an article in Yahoo Sports, and I sent it to you all in the group chat, Mm -hmm. about there was a chance that the Cowboys were going to re-franchise tag Dak. Mm -hmm. And the question was, is why would the Cowboys do that? The deadline to sign his extension is Tuesday, which is, you're probably listening to today. Mm -hmm. His, his... So the the deadline is today based upon listening. And so now the question is, why would they do that? So that would be 37.7 million this year. And then if they decide to go one more time after that, which they can, it's $50 million. What do they have to pay them that season? Which means they weren't going to franchise them, which leads them to be a free agent. Then we got a ding. Ding on the phone from ESPN. The Dallas Cowboys and quarterback Dak Prescott have agreed to a four-year, $160 million contract, <laughs> including a record $126 million guaranteed. Prescott will get a signing bonus of $66 million, making him the highest in NFL history, and the first three will average $42 million. It is a four-year deal, which is what Dak wanted from jump. Mm-hmm. Jimmy, the fact that he's going to get $75 million in the first year, which is also another record, mm-hmm. Was this a good move by the Dallas Cowboys? You know, and I was oh, I was so warming up to the idea of Russell Wilson being a Cowboys <laughs> You just talked about I don't that. even know why, because I love Russell Wilson. I would have been happy to get him out of the NFC West with my 49ers, and I think that his star and celebrity would have continued to, would have skyrocketed even more in Dallas. But I am happy for Dak Prescott. For him, this is what these last two years have been about. Getting the deal that he wants, getting the deal that to me he deserves, and getting the deal that, for reasons that you mentioned and that haven't been mentioned, Dallas had to do. I think they woke up and they realized, okay, yes, the only blemish that he has on his record is that he has not performed as well against winning teams as we want him to. But outside of that, he has been the the second face of this franchise behind Jerry Jones. He's been a leader on the field. He has been someone who the players will follow, who the players love. And he has had some seasons where he has put up big numbers, big passing yards. And he was on his way to doing that again before getting hurt this season. He has literally given parts of his body to this franchise in order to help them be successful, doing above and beyond. So I think that when they looked at this, they they caved. They gave him what he wanted instead of what they wanted. But they realized that sometimes it's better to get this sort of thing right than to be right in what you believe it should be. So I give credit to them for that. I think he deserved this. I think that he's exactly, you know, he's just about everything you want in a quarterback on and off the field. And this is uh, clearly what his market was and this is what they paid. And I'm happy for him. Yeah. I I think it's a good move for Dallas. They needed this. They needed some stability, which we're seeing a lot of instability in the quarterback position in NFL right now. I mean, Mm -hmm. look at it. We just talked about Russell Wilson potentially being sent out, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to X out the fact that he could be traded to Dallas because in order to trade for a Russell Wilson, they needed to put Dak under contract. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that's, that's, that's going to happen. I'm also going (laughs) to not say it's not going to happen. So we'll keep that there, but there's a lot of instability in quarterbacks. Sean Watson wants to get out. The 49ers don't know what they're going to do about their quarterback right now. The Patriots don't have a quarterback or they may bring Cam Newton back. We don't know. The Carolina Panthers have already made it look like Teddy Bridgewater is gone. Bears. Drew Bledsoe's retired. The Bears know that they can't go back out there, Mitchell Trubisky, or whoever else they tried to work it with, Nick Foles. Chase Daniels. Uh, Chase Daniels and everybody else on there. <laughs> Jaguars don't have a quarterback, which they're actually going to draft one. Washington doesn't have one because they just released Alex Smith. The list goes on and on with teams. This is probably the one year where, and I mentioned this a while back, this is probably the most instability a quarterback for more multiple teams, I think I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, the Eagles just announced, well, in theory, just put out there that they want to build around their new quarterback, and they traded another quarterback down to Indianapolis. So, mm-hmm. so much shuffling. Dallas needs something that's stable. And so I felt like this was the smartest move to go. Give the dude four years. Stick to that. The new TV deal is going to be up this 
this coming, either this summer or next summer, they'll be negotiating it again, Mm -hmm. and that will be implemented, and so there'll be more money out there available. Heck, I think one TV rights is going to be going for between 2.6 and 3 billion, so from one station, so that means they may bring in (laughs) 25 billion this year, next year, because they were the, you know, the animal, so let me get off my soapbox, Dak deserves it, and let me look, let's talk about the five seasons he's been there, and this is from ESPN, Adam Schefter's team reporting. Okay. Prescott has a team record seven 400-yard passing games, 24 rushing touchdowns, which is the most by Cowboys quarterback. Mm -hmm. Second to Romo in 300-yard passing games at 15. He also proved to be clutch with 15 game-winning drives. Mm -hmm. Now Dallas needs to build a defense. Draft a good defense so that Dak does not have to do everything by himself. You know what? Just in thinking about it, the Dak injury, as horrible as it was, and how, you know, if anyone could wish that that wouldn't happen to him or any player, you would. But I think that him being out and then what they went through with the Ben DiNucci's of the world helped to remind them of what life was like when they went. Actually, it reminded them of what life was like before Tony Romo. They had a quarterback that won. They went 12-4 and four with the Cincinnati Bengals of all teams. And he couldn't do anything with that roster. I was so wrong on that, even though the one component that was required to do that was to hire Hugh Jackson, who was his <laughs> OC and made made Andy Dalton, who he was, the Red Revolver or whatnot. He couldn't do it. That's how bad that team was without. The defense got better because they got healthy. That's always been Dallas's problem with defense. They can't stay healthy. When those linebackers are healthy – Dallas defense is now legit. They, they signed Dan Quinn as a defensive coordinator, formerly the head coach of Atlanta, was a defensive coordinator of the Legion of Boom, won a championship. To me, that's j- almost as big of an off of a off season signing as finally locking up Dak Prescott with the contract that he wants. That keeps him in the building for the next four years. So they made the right move. That was the best move to make, and they made it.